Hey everyone, welcome to Wikcode, where in this video we're going to learn how to work with the Docker Postgres image. So first, why do we want to Dockerize Postgres? Well, the benefit of Dockerizing Postgres is that it avoids the headache of installing and configuring database servers. Docker containers are available that are specifically designed to support Postgres databases, allowing us to skip all the installation. Also, using a Docker container for Postgres provides a consistent and isolated environment for which can be distributed and ran in different environments. But so, before we go any further, let's talk about Docker containers and persistence. So an issue with Docker containers and Postgres is that when a container is removed, the data is not persisted and is deleted. However, that is easily fixed by using Docker volumes. A Docker volume maps file systems on a host machine to file systems on a Docker container, allowing for data to persist longer than the life cycle of the container. So let's create a volume called my Postgres volume. And now let's pull the latest Postgres Docker image from Docker Hub using the command docker pull Postgres. Now let's create a Docker container from the Postgres image using the docker run command. The Postgres image uses several environment variables to get working. However, the only variable that is actually required is Postgres password. So here we are creating a container called my Postgres container from the Postgres image. We provide environmental variables with the dash E. Specifically, dash dash name here gives the container a name dash e postgres password here it sets the super user password for postgres and here we're setting it to t o o r postgres user sets the super username and here we set it to wikcode postgres db sets the name for the database that is created when the image is started we are setting it to my db dash d runs the docker container in the background of the terminal and dash v here is important which sets the docker volume so this directory here, dash var, dash lib, dash postgresql, dash data, is where database files for Postgres are stored by default. We map this location on the Docker container to our Docker volume that we created up here, my Postgres volume. This will make it so even when we remove this container, if we create another container from this image, we will still have all the Postgres data that we created. And finally, dash p maps the machine port number 8005, on our machine to 5432 in the Docker container, which is the default port that Postgres work runs on. And now let's connect to the Postgres container and check the value we set. To do this, let's first get the container ID for the Postgres container with Docker PS. And we can see my Postgres container listed here. We can see the container ID up here, which of course is also this that was returned when we created the Postgres container. But anyway, let's take this ID right here and let's connect to it with the docker exec command. The docker exec command runs a command in a running container. What we want to run is a bash shell, so we supply it the command to run a bash shell. So here, dash i keeps the container's standard input open so it can accept commands. Dash t allocates a pseudo tty which makes container look like a terminal connection session. So now we are inside our Postgres container. And what we usually will do is let's connect to mydb as wikcode with the command psql-u wikcode mydb. mydb is the name of the database that we created with the environment variables, and wikcode is the super user that we created with the environment variables. And now we can see we are connected to mydb. Now let's start working with Postgres. So let's create a table called users with a username column of varying characters up to length 100. Now let's insert the user wit code into it and then select all rows from the users table. Of course, we have to end with a semicolon, and we can see we inserted the user wit code, and we got back wit code. So we have an instance of Postgres running, and we didn't have to do any sort of server installation. 
we can just work with Postgres right out of the box. But now let's verify that our volume worked. So we're going to do this by shutting down our current container and removing it with the docker rm command. So first we're going to stop the container and next we're going to remove it. And now let's create another container from the Postgres image, the same way we did before, but let's call the container my Postgres container 2. So we have all the same environmental variables and the important thing is we're using the same volume. So we'll have our Postgres data still saved, which is the user WIC code. And let's create this container. And now let's execute a bash shell in it again. We see my Postgres container too. Let's take this ID. We'll run Docker exec on this new ID. Now let's connect back to our Postgres database as WIC code. And now let's select all rows from the user table. And we can see we still have WIC code. So even though we tore down the container and started a new one, because of our volume, we still have WIC code running. So this shows that the data inside Postgres is present longer than the lifecycle of the container. So this is all that it takes to get Postgres running with Docker. We can see how useful it is to use Docker as we can avoid all the installation steps with getting Postgres up and running. Whereas now we have a Postgres database that we can connect to with any application and get it working. So this is my video on getting Postgres set up with Docker. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. I'll try and get back to you. But, but besides that, I want to thank you for liking and subscribing today, and I hope to see you in the next one. Have a good one.